Hello everybody and welcome to Theology 101. Today we are going to look at the book of Numbers. Numbers is the fourth book in the Hebrew Bible and is part of the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch refers to the first five books of the Bible, which have been traditionally believed to be written by Moses. The Hebrew title for this book is literally In the Wilderness, revealing the content of this book. It is a historical narrative that recounts the events Israel experienced during their time in the wilderness, transitioning from Mount Sinai to the Promised Land. The purpose of this book is both theological and practical. Theologically, it brings focus to Yahweh's love for Israel and his faithfulness to his promises for them to eventually inherit the Promised Land. Practically, the book shows patterns of worship and behavior that will be necessary for Israel to live in the Promised Land. Now, there are two things that help structure this book. The first thing that structures this book are the censuses. The reason why this book is called Numbers is because of the different censuses listed. The censuses are important because they provide a structure to the narratives that happen between them. The first census comes after the events of the Exodus and focuses on the generation that had experienced and survived these events. These events are recorded in Numbers chapter 1 to 25, and this generation is known as the Exodus generation, and the census was taken of them while they were still at Mount Sinai. The census accounted for all the men who were at least 20 years old, which is the minimum age for military service. However, we see from the narratives that the Exodus generation failed to enter the Promised Land because of God's judgment on them. Except for Joshua and Caleb, none of the people who were delivered from Egypt were able to enter the Promised Land. So a second census was taken for the next generation that will enter the Promised Land, and this covers Numbers chapters 26 to 36. A second thing that structures the book of Numbers is geographical movement. Numbers chapter 1 to 10 focuses on Israel at Mount Sinai. Numbers chapter 10 to 20 focuses on the events at Kadesh Barnea. Then Numbers chapter 20 to 36 focuses on the plains of Moab before Israel enters the Promised Land. So we can read the book of Numbers by looking at the different locations the narratives take place. Now understanding the overall structure of Numbers, we do see several themes within this book. First, we see the theme of God's protection. There's a story of how the king of Moab Balak saw Israel as a threat and wanted to attack them. He heard how they already defeated the Amorites, so he wanted to join the Midianites to destroy Israel. So he contacted Balaam, a pagan prophet, to curse the Israelites so that they would be defeated. Balaam decided to accept Balak's offer. However, Yahweh intervenes by sending the angel of the Lord. While Balaam is riding a donkey, the donkey tries to avoid the angel of the Lord, and in response, Balaam beats the donkey, but the donkey then speaks to Balaam to stop. At this point, Balaam saw the angel of the Lord and understood why his donkey was afraid of moving forward and swore to never speak curses against Israel. So when Balak met with Balaam, he expected Balaam to curse Israel. However, every time Balaam was supposed to curse Israel, he instead blesses them. This happened three times in a row. And the fourth time when Balaam spoke, he actually prophesied the downfall of Balak and his people. And what we see from this narrative is that God's protection is with Israel, which explains how they were able to safely navigate through the wilderness and eventually enter the promised land. We see another narrative in Numbers chapter 14, verses 39 to 45 of the same theme. Israel complains against God for bringing them out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They even say they want to choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. God responds with anger and desires to destroy Israel. Moses successfully intercedes for Israel and pleads with God not to destroy them. However, we see that Israel continues in their rebellion when they go to war without God or Moses' approval. Obviously, without God's protection, Israel was defeated. Later in Numbers chapter 21, we see Israel's victory over the king of Arad. The reason for this victory is because the Israelites prayed, asking for God's help, again revealing the reality that Israel could only succeed with God's protection. A second theme in Numbers is the theme of land. A theological theme from Abraham is that of God's promise to give his descendants a specific land. In fact, the censuses were supposed to prepare Israel to travel to their new land. Therefore, we see passages that show God's concern for Israel's moral purity and his punishment of impurity with death were meant to show Israel the necessary holiness they must live by to inherit their promised land. So Israel concluded several things about their land. First, this land was given by God. Second, this land was to be a holy land. 
And third, Israel was supposed to possess this land permanently. This leads to the third and final theme, death and pollution. Beginning in Numbers chapter 11, people within Israel experienced death as a form of judgment. This is exemplified with the entire generation dying in the wilderness and never experiencing the blessings of their new homeland. So from Numbers chapter 14, the narratives mention not only leaders, such as Miriam and Aaron, but many others who rebel against God and experience death. Why was this the case? God is continually showing how he cannot tolerate any type of pollution amongst his people. This recalls the theme of Leviticus, which is that God's holiness is a standard that must be shared by his people. Thus we see in Numbers chapter 19, laws explaining what a person must do if he or she comes in physical contact with the dead. Why? To give an object lesson of how pollution, sin, and death must be kept away from God and his people. So what is the overall message of the book of Numbers? The book of Numbers shows what happened between the time when Israel received the law and prepared themselves to enter the promised land. However, we see that this was not a smooth transition because the problem of sin continually affected God's people every step of the way. Therefore, God's people needed to repent and renew their commitment to him and his law before they can receive the inheritance God prepared for them. This is what we will look at in the next book, Deuteronomy. Thank you to today's sponsor on Reverence. They offer free digital worship music app called Masco. If you want to find out more, I'll leave some links below in the description box. If you missed the last video about the book of Leviticus, I'll leave a link here for you to watch. Until next time, see you.